We begin this evening in Baker County, where four people died and one person is hospitalized from a head-on collision and fire. The accident was shortly after 9 this morning on US 90 near I-10. According to the Highway Patrol, a Toyota Camry veered over the center line and crashed into a Ford Expedition. Channel 4's Elizabeth Campbell has been at the scene all day and joins us live from US 90. Elizabeth, can you tell us first how the survivor is doing? Mary, the survivor is in serious condition at UF Health in Gainesville, where she was taken early this morning. But when we first got to the scene this morning, we were told she was in life threatening condition. So that is definitely a good sign. Hopefully, she is improving. And FHP tells me that she was able to speak. Now, as you can see behind me, the road has since reopened. This road was closed for about seven hours. And that one woman who is in the hospital trying to make her way through this, FHP says that she. She is very lucky that she made it out alive. A roadway littered with wreckage Monday morning after a horrific head on collision took the lives of four people. The crash happened around 9 12 a.m. in Baker County on US 90, just a few miles west of I 10, when this silver Toyota Camry veered over the center line, hitting this Ford Expedition. A fire started in the SUV after the crash, and the woman driving was able to escape with the help of paramedics. The other two people on that expedition died, as well as two others in the Camry. Sergeant Dylan Bryan with the Florida Highway Patrol says the sole survivor's interview will be key in this investigation. Some of the next steps is uh, processing the information and the evidence that we have here on the scene. Uh, that includes talking to the witnesses uh, and other parties involved. Uh, the driver of the SUV is, is um, able to talk, so uh, you know her interview is also very, very important to our investigation. Sergeant Bryan says there have been 51 crashes in this area since 2010. FHP and the Florida Department of Transportation are working together to find a solution. We call it the three E's, if you will. Uh, education and enforcement, those don't work. We look at engineering, whether or not the roadway needs to be repaved or resurfaced or redesigned. He says deadly crashes like this can take an emotional toll on officers, and the Baker County Fire Chief says his crews have a tough time as well. Probably the hardest thing for them to deal with is the emotional side of it, and because we are people too, just like you guys. Fighting fire is not that big of a deal, but dealing with people inside of our fire is the problem. Not all of the families of these victims have been notified yet because they are still working to identify some of the victims in the crash. Sergeant Bryan with FHP says that this investigation could take weeks or it could take months. Reporting live from Baker County, Elizabeth Campbell, Channel 4, The Local Station. Elizabeth, so, so sad. Is there any word, though, whether the victims were buckled up? Mary, right now we do not yet know if any of these people were wearing seat belts. They say that because these cars, both of them, were so severely damaged that it's really hard to tell. And FHP even told me that the SUV that was burned so badly that if the fire burned the seat belt holders or even part of the seat belt, they said that that can make it nearly impossible to be able to tell. So hopefully within the next couple of days we will get an update on that. Mary. Uh, all right, Elizabeth Campbell reporting to us from Baker County. Well, the Florida Highway Patrol is also investigating this deadly crash on I-295 in Mandarin. Troopers say a car was heading south near Old St. Augustine Road at around 4.30 a.m. When it went off the road, hit a light pole and caught fire. They say the two people in the car were trapped and could not get out. They died at the scene. The Florida Highway Patrol says they're still trying to identify them.